Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Brian. Today I'm going to talk about how you can take $700 and turn it into an epic gaming computer that is water cooled. First I'm going to show you guys the parts, talk about the prices and why I picked them. I'm going to do a quick unboxing of the few pieces that have more than one piece. Um, I'm going to build it outside of the case and do a post test. Build it inside the case, do some wire cleanup and make it look pretty. Then I'm going to do some overclocking and wrap it up with a little bit of testing with Passmark, 3DMark, and Valley Bench. So if you'd like to see how I build a computer, pay attention to today's Chanley Style. Before I do the post section, I want to talk about one thing. I said bundle deals can be bad and usually cost you the same amount of money as buying the parts individually. I was mistaking this fact because I, I looked a little bit deeper this item this item and the RAM so the processor the motherboard and the RAM were actually cheaper when buying it in the bundle I ended up saving a little bit more money than I thought so the actual grand total of the computer what its net worth is is one thousand fifty four dollars and fifty one cents my price at the end was still seven hundred and three dollars and that means I saved $351.51. So I saved about tree fitty. Now on to everything else. One thing you're definitely going to want to pay attention to and be extra careful with because these have pins on them. If you look at the triangle right there, that goes with this triangle right here. So pry open the bar. Boom. Uh. Gently set it in there and then lock it back down. Uh, I don't know how it is with all motherboards, but this one, the AMD logo is pointing up. So it'll give you an idea which way you should probably load it up in there. I did say I was going to use the Zolman cooler, but for just the post test, I will use the crappy um, one that comes with it. It does have thermal paste already on it, little tiny squares. Oh, did that backwards. Hook the top one, then the bottom one, and oop, lock it down. When installing RAM, make sure it's facing the right direction. Open both clips and press down firmly until the clips lock in place. A huge mistake that I made while doing this is I should have plugged in the power supply first, leaving it in the off position so that it's still grounded before I plugged it into the motherboard. Luckily, nothing bad happened. So kind of a uh, interesting move on my part. I decided to take all the cords out of the case so I can just use them without having the case on the desk and if you look that is how the front IO or I'm sorry not the front IO the uh, the power connector panels are set up always 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 consult your guide only the power connector is required during a post test that's done and post test. Here we go. Oh, I guess, uh, you know, when you consult the manual, you should read it properly. Originally, I had the power switch connected vertically, but it needed to be connected horizontally and connected to the proper ground. Hey, look, I'm not an idiot. We've got a screen. Four gigabytes of RAM, CPU speed 3600 megahertz. It's recognizing everything. Post is good. I'll give you a quick view. So everything posts. Now it's time to uh, build it up and figure out what to do next. Thermal paste, more like thermal cement. I'll start off by removing the stock hardware from the motherboard so that I can install the Zolman hardware instead. 
The backplate for the Zillman cooler came with uh, a double-sided adhesive foam, which would be good for people that don't have a cutout in their motherboard tray. Putting together the plate that actually holds the cooler to the CPU was freaking impossible because the instructions were terrible, hard to read, and not really made for AMD. I'm going to really put this in a fast forward because it took forever. Alright, cool, perfect. Finally, I added the threaded pins to the back of the motherboard plate. Alright, so finished product should look something like this. Coffee filters, isopropyl alcohol. All you need to clean off um, thermal paste. They're lint free, they're coarse enough that they take it off and they leave a really nice clean surface. And they're cheap. You don't need to spend freaking ten, twenty dollars or whatever it is on a thermal paste cleaning kit. Three stage thermal paste cleaning kit. Yay. It's a freaking waste of money. Especially if you already have isopropyl alcohol laying around. And you're a coffee drinker. It's a lot cheaper and most people already have these things in their house. Perfect. Clean. Whatever. See how good that looks. Almost like I just took it out of the package. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and set this stuff aside for later. Because now I'm ready to put everything into the case. Alright, so I'm going to start off by putting this stuff back. I drive LED. To stay with the blue theme from the original case, I will. I picked out all blue fans. When installing fans or any hardware, make sure not to torque down the screws completely until all the screws are in place. It makes it a lot easier to line up the screws with the screw holes. One thing to note about this SSD is it actually came with. an adapter so that way you can put it inside of a laptop because right now it is epically thin. There's actually a spot in the bottom of the case where I can install an SSD. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Here I'll be installing the back I.O. panel and the standoffs, and checking to make sure that the motherboard lines up with both. Make sure to press all four corners of the I.O. panel firmly so that it doesn't pop out during motherboard installation. Installation of the motherboard was relatively easy, but I did run into one thing that I would consider a design flaw. There is a screw hole for the motherboard directly underneath one of the clips for the RAM, making it practically impossible to get a screw in there. It was, it was a pain in the butt. Once I found the right tool for the job, the screw went right in. The next thing I'm going to do is start working on a little bit of cable routing for the front I.O. panel. I'm also going to be tightening down a few screws that I've forgotten to tighten. One of the things I actually enjoyed about this motherboard is that the 
the front I.O. is in the center of the board, making it a lot easier for people with fat fingers to hook it up. Normally, I check each connector individually to make sure I don't short off the motherboard, but since I've had this case for quite some time, I just installed them right out the gate. The next thing I'll do is install the mechanical hard drive in line with the fan so that most of the airflow goes across the bottom of the hard drive. Next up are the SATA cables. I'm trying to get all the small wiring out of the way so once the power supply is in the case, I have an idea of where all the wires will go. I originally had my grounding strap attached to my ankle, but it was starting to get obnoxious, so I decided to try moving it to my wrist to see if there was any better comfort. Safety first! Next, I'll be installing the Zillman water cooler. But like I said, the instructions were practically impossible to read. If I'd have known how difficult this would have been, I would have done a separate video on just how to install this and set it up. There it goes. Jesus, like fucking pulling teeth. Next, I'll need to prepare the surface of the Zellman CPU cooler by removing the original thermal paste. Again, using coffee filters and isopropyl alcohol. Based on the price, I'm a huge fan of Arctic Silver 5. What I'm going to be doing is applying a pea-sized dot to the center of the CPU and spreading it out to create an even surface. Basically, if you just have a plastic card, you'll be fine. I like to use some of the uh, smaller, like Ralph's cards or things like that. You don't need to spend money on a spreader. Just something non-metallic to spread it out with, you'd be fine. Apparently I didn't put enough. That'll happen. There's plenty in the tube. Yes, yeah, there's a little bit left over, but that'll be fine. As long as you get a good coverage on the actual CPU itself. You basically want a thin enough coat to smooth out the imperfections between the CPU and the CPU cooler. If you look right there, it's good and covered. Next, I'll size up the radiator inside the cage to make sure it'll fit, separating my screws into two different piles so that I don't get confused. When installing the CPU block, make sure to line it up, sit it down gently, and tighten the screws in short intervals so that the pressure is evenly distributed across the CPU. In hindsight, I should have installed the fan on the radiator before I installed it into the computer. Flipping the computer made it easier to install the fan lead. The next thing I'm going to do is install a fan filter on the back of the case because this is going to be an intake fan. Remember with every build there's things that you're going to run into that you couldn't plan for. On this case there's extra metal bends to give the case a more solid build. I'm having to bend these pieces of metal out of the way so that I can put the case together in the way that I would like. So basically the fan filter will fit on the back instead of falling off all the time. Fuck yeah. I'm a winner! The next thing I'm going to do is stand up the case. That way it's easier to line up the power supply with the screw holes in the back of the case. Time to install this octopus ass motherfucker. Once the power supply is in place and properly secured, I'll need to go through the different connectors and separate the ones that I need from the ones that I don't need. Since there's no way to run cables behind the motherboard tray, I'm going to be very strategic in placement. I'm going to need to keep the wires low profile and out of the way to maximize airflow within the case. All cables I don't use are going to go to the back of the cage. Now with those cables out of the way, I can hook up the SATA power to the hard drives. I also decided to change the way I routed the ribbon cables for the audio and the USB to the back of the motherboard tray because there was enough space. Finally, I installed the graphics card and now I'm ready for wire cleanup. Now that I got everything loaded, computer's running fine, time to do the cleanup work. Static of cables to the back. Since you never really see this side of the case anyway, I figured I'd save this until now. Just gotta try to... 
Huh. Oh, look at that. You only put one screw in in this case. That's cool. It's actually little metal things right there holding that screw in. Or holding that part in. And just for extra stability, I'm going to screw this part down. Boom. Done. Screwed. The next part is bundling and grouping similar wires together so they're not bunched up, overlapped, or clustered into one spot. Keep this aside for now because I'm end up needing these Molex cables. Since there's very limited space on this side and I'm not using an optical drive, I'm going to tuck all the extra wires into the five and a quarter bays. Might as well utilize the space that's not being used, right? Once the PCIe and the Molex cables and the extra static cables are all secured to the front, I'll clean up the fan headers and uh, cables, and then I'm going to reroute the PCI Express power from my graphics card so that it's more out of the way. Finally, I'll zip tie a few of the leads together so that they're more flush with the back of the motherboard tray. So I actually pulled this connector down behind the motherboard. This connector here. I'm going to hopefully have them running off of the same circuit. We'll see how that works out though. Next I'll install the front of the case and a fan controller. Oh, yeah, actually doesn't look half bad. Since the case design is flawed for this situation, I'll be jamming a zip tie through the left side of the fan controller's screw hole and securing it to the side of the case. This proved to be more difficult than I actually thought it was going to be, even with tiny zip ties. Yep, that's not going anywhere. Oh man, I just cleaned that. I'll finish this part up by tightening down all the zip ties and clipping off the extra. The first thing I'm going to need to do is set up a Y splitter on the switch. The switch is going to be running two fans at the same time, which is perfectly fine. Hooking both fans into the switch and into the power, tightening everything down, and securing it all with zip ties. I know my wire cleanup work looks like shit, but no one gets to see this part of the case anyway. So whatever, as long as it fits. Secure down the case, and I'm done. Alright guys, well that's the end of part two. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I actually ended up taking about three hours worth of video, editing and cutting it down to, what was it, um, 17 and a half minutes. So, I really hope you enjoyed what I did for you. It was a pain in the butt. Uh, but, that was my first build video and maybe next time I'll be able to do it in a shorter amount of time. So anyway, the uh, computer's done, the overclocking's done. The next thing is just to um, do an overview and I'll show you the results. So if you want to see what happened, uh, you know, same thing I always say. Sub uh, subscribe, like, follow, that whole, th that whole deal. And uh, the next part should be out soon, so pay attention to Chanley Style.